friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Before you do your skim coat, make sure that you make your mud nice and pliable, creamy. Let me show you. What I like about the lightweight is that it's less heavy. If you buy the green lid, there's more shrinking and it's heavier because it's a different consistency. It's got more water in it. If you want to go thinner, you can always add water to the lightweight joint compound. Plus three is one of several that I use. I don't recommend anyone in particular, except if you're fast at skim coating, I highly recommend that you get the, the bags of joint compound to which you have to add water. And I suggest in that case that you use 90 minute mud because the finish is excellent and you can do a polish coat on the second coat. The, the thinner you go, the more coats you have to apply. But if your arm hurts or you're doing a lot of skim coating, you have to yield to the pain that is caused by skim coating. And so if you go with this and you add some water, which I didn't add water to this, but as it dries, as you have this bucket open, it will, the, the water content will evaporate and you'll have to add water, which is why you should have one of these. Always while skim coating, you wanna have a water bottle so that you can spritz the top of it so that only this water evaporates and none of the water that's in the mix. After one coat of skim coating over orange peel, you can see that we have some work to do. We have to make this flat. We have to hang this wallpaper tomorrow. And so skim coating is an important skill to have when hanging wallpaper. So let's go over some of the tools you need for skim coating. Toilet bowl brush, whatever you want to call this thing. You want that to clean off your tools, okay? Secondly, you want a mud mixer. This, this shaft here, this is a pretty strong mud mixer, but it's a lot of, place, a lot of places on this tool for mud to get trapped, so you need to clean that well. It's a good tool. You just go pull it up and down while it's in the mud. You need some taping knives. People call them spatulas, whatever. You need small ones to get into small areas. This one is a four inch that scoops it out and it also forms a 90 degree angle application. 
right in the left side of this thing, you'll see a 90 degree angle. It's important when you're skim coating so that you get up right up against that wall and then some. You need your main applicator. I like eight inches. This is 10. This causes a little more pressure on the arm and it gets, it, it could get painful to do. Okay, but you use your two fingers, press down, maybe take some Tylenol afterwards. It does, it does become painful. And then you need the tool on which to place your mud. Name of the game, don't put too much mud on here. Just enough to occupy your time for three to five minutes up there. If you load this thing up, you're going to hurt your arm. Okay. This is as much mud as I want on this hawk. Okay. One third of the space of the hawk is occupied by mud. That's plenty. You want to make sure that it doesn't slide off. And the way to do that is to load up the hawk when you first take it out and it's nice and clean, load it up and wipe everything off in back into the bucket. Believe it or not, that will cause traction when you reload it. Okay, there's nothing like holding a mud pan or in this case a hawk and your customer walks in and you're talking and it falls right off because you didn't have traction on this. I've left some residual compound on it from yesterday. It's giving me traction. It's porous. It's sucking the wet mud into itself. It's not going to fall off unless I'm completely negligent. And so for the newcomers, there's, there's a mechanics involved. Don't be intimidated by this. You want to hire people like us? You're going to pay out money. Here's the benefit of doing it yourself. You shut your bathroom down for a week, even two weeks. Take the time to do it yourself. If you're so inclined, if you don't have the money to pay somebody. And you'll get it done. You'll get it done. It'll take you a lot longer than the professional. But you'll save all of that money. And you'll stay off of Facebook and YouTube and texting. And you'll put yourself, your, your time to good use in the meantime. Plus, you'll develop nice sized biceps by doing it okay and triceps as well just kidding let's see so many of you shy away from wallpaper because the walls have texture many of you don't know what texture is i'll ask people please send me a picture of your wall does it have texture they say no it doesn't and then they send me a picture of something that looks like this and they say see that there's no texture. That's texture. Even if it were flat, you would say it's a flat texture. But texture is bumps, generally speaking. And they impede the beauty of wallpaper installation in varying degrees. If you're hanging a solid color vinyl, for example, and you try to join two vinyl seams together, what you're going to see is a nice, solid, beautiful color. And then at the seams, you will see differences from the top of the seam to the bottom in color, varying shades of black. And why is that? Well, as you see varying degrees of texture there, the seam falls on those varying degrees of texture, which are militating against the joining of the left sheet and the right sheet. And where there is little texture, you have what appears to be seamlessness. And where there's more texture, you have what appears to be a seam that's more visible 
in one place than in others. And that is caused by the, the differences that take place when you go up and down a particular line of texture in flatness and bumpiness. And so, if you're going to hang wallpaper over texture, your best bet would be to hang a busy pattern over your texture. You won't notice it in the daytime. At night, you will. So, if you have the money, get rid of your texture. If you don't have the money, think about getting a busy pattern if you want to hide your texture. But if you really want to do it right, spend the money and have it made flat. Now my good friends from across the lake will say, Spencer, just use lining paper. Well, you and I both know that if you use even the best gauge of lining paper, you will still have what appears to be a non-flat surface in your finished product, which is fine with most people. Now, for me, adding lining paper increases the price. Uh, if I have to wait for that to be installed and then to dry, etc., etc., it's like hanging wallpaper twice. We say, what about doing skin coat? Same thing. It's just that with the skin coat, I can guarantee that it's going to be perfectly flat. Okay? I'm not hanging lining paper over knockdown. I don't want to be liable for oh, it's still bumpy or whatever. Now, in all works of construction, I'm going to show you the easiest thing that you can master, and it's called skin coating. This is my 20th video on skin coating, but it bears beneficial results, to repeat it, that going in this, in the path I'm gonna show you, it's very simple. You can master skin coating if you just have the will to do it. Let me show you how easy it is. Well, there you have the bumps, right? There's my hawk that I have. I hope it stays against the wall. And here is my blade. The object is to fill in the bumps, right? If I go too thick, I'm making a new texture. Therefore, the trick to filling in your texture is going as thinly as possible without making these lines. Trust me, you can do this. If you can put peanut butter on a sandwich, you can do this. That's only one coat. Look how nice and flat. So what? You'll have to sand. No big deal. Now that'll shrink and it'll become a little more bumpy like that. But then on the second coat, you're gonna get it to a nice flatness. Now, what are we doing when we skim coat? What we're doing is trying to make the least amount of compound fill in the lows. The highs are touching my blade. It's the lows that allow the light to pass through. You see at the top of the blade? Those are the lows. That's what you're looking to fill in, to join the highs together. That's it. So, with that in mind, you want to put the least amount on. Watch this. If I hold my blade like this, at a 90 degree angle with the wall, I take the most off, but I fill in, I fill in the nooks and crannies, right? I'll only need two more coats to make that nice and flat. But if you knew nothing else about skim coating and you just followed what I just did, you got it down. You got it. That's right. What happens with skim coating is people try to, to float the wall in one pass. And, and I've seen professionals do this. Oh, how long did it take you to skim coat the wall? I had a guy working for me six hours to float, the, float a wall. I said, what are you doing? What he was doing was trying to make the wall flat using his hand and floating the compound. I said, just use multiple coats. Fill that in like that. 
You see, that's going to shrink. You're going to come back to that. It's still going to be bumpy. But then on the second pass, you do it again. You do it again, and guess what you're going to start winding up with? Flatness. But for you beginners, just do this. Look. The more you hold the blade this way, the more you're going to fill it in without lap lines. That's it. If you know nothing else, just fill it in at a 90 degree angle. If you're a little better at it, you can drop it down to 45 degrees. And then, you see that? I'm filling in more surface. You see the difference? I filled in more here than here. But if you know nothing about it and you want to save yourself a lot of money, do this. Just come in and do this. Think about it as a spreading peanut butter on your wall. And just do that. Okay? Don't make a mess of your wall. You can do it. It's understanding what's going on when you skim coat that makes you successful. I'm gonna show you. This is what I want you to do if you know nothing else about skim coating. Just do this. That's all. And look at how well you will have done. That's your work. You filled in all of that bumpiness on one coat. Then you're gonna do the same thing again. Even if you're terrible at skim coating, you keep filling that in at that angle, guess what you're gonna have? A finish that looks like that. Can you do it? I know you can. So, at some point, maybe after an hour, you'll become a pro. And, and I'm, not, I'm not being facetious. You will have the necessary skills to finish off your skim coat project like a pro. So now I showed you the basics. Straight ahead is a 90 degree angle. Bring it halfway down toward the wall, that's a 45 degree angle. The more your taping knife is bent toward 45, or actually towards zero, because flat is zero, right? This is 90, that's 45, that's about 20. The more you are towards zero, the more compound you're leaving on the wall. And you do it when you spread peanut butter, you just never think of it like this. But if you can spread peanut butter, you've already got down the the uh, intellectual knowledge that you need to skim coat successfully. The rest is in the hand. Don't let some professional tell you you can't do this. You can do it. It's, you, you already do it in other parts of your life. So let me show you. At a 20 degree angle, I'm leaving on more compound. At a 90, Let me do 90. This is 90. I'm taking most of it off. It's about 20 degrees right here. This is a 90 degree angle. And it has its purpose, 90 degrees. When you just want to fill in little things. Maybe uh, a clinker got stuck. You know, what's a clinker? One of these things got stuck. You just want to fill it in. You'll only fill in the line it made. Do you know what I mean? Let me bring it in close. You see that black mark? You see that's a clinker. You see where it dragged it? If you wanted to fill that in, then you do a 90 degree polish coat. But when you're applying it, you, if, you, if you're more advanced and you're more confident, then you're going to reduce your angle. So let me show you how it would look like in real time. Okay? When I was 20, 22, 
a guy was taping sheetrock. I was in college. I said, how do you do that? How do you make sheetrock look like it's one piece? He said, quote unquote, he said, that's an art. But he wasn't saying it as if to say, it's an art. He was saying it, it's an art that you'll never learn. He was saying, well, that's an art. Well, he's probably not working anymore. But I am. Now, you want to save your muscle? You put it on thick, that's fine. Help your muscle by making it easier to screed. That's what we're doing now. We're gonna screed this off. Let me bring it in close. It's good to put it on thick, that's all right. But now, we, we, we're not gonna let it dry like that. Look how nice, and follow, consider the angle at which I'm doing this. Let me just, uh, just move you away a bit. Okay. I go into the corner. I took a lot off. Notice how I don't make lines. Isn't that something? See the angle at which I'm screening the excess? from the wall. You will learn all of this by simply doing it. Nobody told me this. You learn it as you're doing this. Okay? Now, if, if you have family and friends like I do, you know the rule when you know how to skin coat. You have a lot more friends all of a sudden. Who need you to skin coat? Oh, Spencer, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while since your YouTube channel. Why don't you come over? I got a new house. Okay. Hey, Spence. I got this wall I'm on a skin coat. Yeah? I'm dumb. I'm like, who are you going to get? Well, actually, my wife was thinking about you. Me? What made you think of me? You know what I'm saying? It's like hitting a lottery. All of a sudden, you know, maybe you got a little strained relationship with your brother or your sister. All of a sudden, your sister's calling you. Hey! I like that. Two years, I haven't heard from him. Hey! Well, if you learn how to do this, shh, keep it to yourself. You see, I try to entertain you guys so that you're disinclined to leave the channel. So I, I like to involve a little comedy. Just a little. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. But do you know that I actually did stand-up comedy? I'm seriously... I, I don't know if I ever told you guys that. I was actually on stage at the New York Comedy Club and other venues. I just forget their names. I wasn't that good. But I had a good night. One good one.
Go, go. I'm not kidding. Okay. So, so now, this is a professional doing this. And really, I mean, for wallpaper, you don't have to even sand this. I mean, that's how good it is. But I'm going to sand it. You know why? Because I invested $2,200 in a Festool Planex drywall sander. And um, once in a while, I'm, I'll miss something and it stands out and it's, it's not good on the wallpaper. So you know what I decided? Drywall sand it, there's no dust. If you have to sand this and you're a pro, understand that your, your customer would rather pay more and hire me who doesn't sand. So I used to never sand. And then I saw some imperfections behind a bowl or something like that. And I said, I'm just going to sand it. And um, the customers, are, they're very happy with the finished product. Even though this, I'd like to touch it now, but I might smudge it. It's super smooth. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It is super smooth. But you'll get there. But if you're the guy or gal who was doing this for the first time, you'll do it as good as this. It'll take you four coats. Oh, yeah. Don't think you're doing this on a Saturday. You're not. You're going to do it on two Saturdays because you're going to start at 8 in the morning. You're going to get your skim coat up by 11. Then you're going to start with the tools again at around 2 o'clock with the fans blowing and everything, drying it. And then you're going to put your second coat. The next Saturday, you're going to start it again in the morning. It's going to look really good, and you're going to put your last coat on. I guarantee you. I know it's a lot, but if you do four coats, if you've never done this before, it's going to look like I just, I just did it right here. There you go. I hope you do great things and skim coat just as good as the pros do it, because I'm here to tell you, you can do it too. That's all smooth. Those dark spots are fillings of where I needed to fill it in. That's smooth. 